What's up, everybody? Josh here. I wanted to pop in real quick before you started the episode, uh, mainly to ap- apologize. So this particular episode, when we recorded it, something went horribly wrong with my microphone setup. Toby sounds great. My recording got completely destroyed. So I have done the best that I can to salvage it so you can at least hear this particular episode, but it doesn't sound amazing. So I wanted to let you know that that this is all cleared up for the next episode already. That's already rec- already recorded. Everything sounds great. We're all good to go for the next episode. Just a little bit of a hiccup here for this particular episode. Unfortunately, not something that we could really re-record as we'd already moved ahead. We'd already watched the next Common Rider episodes. Uh, so we couldn't really recapture that magic of having just watched this episode again for the first time and discussing it together for the first time. So here we are, a little bit of bad audio, it, it'll it sound better for next episode, please stick around for us, um, if this is your first episode you're checking out, maybe go back and listen to one of the others where uh, it sounds a little bit better, and then skip ahead to the next one, but uh, nonetheless, I wanted to present this episode here uh, so that we have the continuity, we have our full kind of timeline of episodes, again, very sorry this happened, and it'll get cleared up for next time, but until then, uh, we'll jump into the episode. Thanks again for listening. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now wake up! It's time to look at the enemy. What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Common Writers. I'm your host, Josh Geek, Uber Geek, joined as always. Bye, Bye, my good friend, Toby. (laughs) I'm right right on top of you on that one. (laughs) (laughs) We are professionals. (laughs) You let that hang, weird. That's on you. (laughs) I do. No, that that was... I've changed up the intro for you, I feel like, every single episode. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, sometimes I I say your name, sometimes I don't. Completely throwing you a curveball every time you touch the ball. Yeah, I I, I take full responsibility. That's what we need. (laughs) But we're not professional enough to start over again, by any means. That seems um, ridiculous. That's like cheating the system. No, yeah. People need our our authentic take. Um, there, there was an episode where I messed up the intro and we did start again, but I included my screw up at the beginning of our episode so people could hear it. Uh, that's how real I am. See, that's classic. And it's funny. So, like, when we start with errors and, like, talk over each other and stuff, a way better name for the show would be a comedy of errors. Right in there with us today, huh? <laughs> Well, I was told to not do fucking lead ups, and I all needed twenty minutes of backstory first. I had to, That's true. I had to jam it in there, and luckily we screwed up a little, so it was actually a perfect, <laughs> perfect segue. <laughs> Look at this! I first of all, I set them up. You knock them down. We're a perfect team. <laughs> Second of all, you took a note. I'm in, I'm, I'm, I'm completely impressed. <laughs> I gave you a note last episode, and then you, uh, yeah, you morphed and ran with it. Perfect. Like well, you know, like I mean, like your note was really like, "Hey asshole, don't do this." <laughs> it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a friendly like, "Hey, by the way, you know this might not really be necessary." It was more like, what, "Hey, stupid, don't there. do this all the time." <laughs> one, one. When when have you ever listened to me tell you to not do something? <laughs> I feel like it's so rare they don't like you actually try to like give me helpful hints. <laughs> don't even know if the opportunity has come up before or not. <laughs> also, it was. Like, I give you crap about things often, and in the sense that I want you to keep doing them as well. <laughs> I'm not opposed to the long ramble. I just wanted to point out that you were using the long ramble to build up an otherwise mediocre name that you were about to deliver to me. <laughs> These are all fair. <laughs> uh, com- comedy of errors. So are you calling it like common B? Yeah, like common, A-A-B-A-B-A. common DUI. <laughs> common DUI. Um, that might be your worst one yet, I think. Yeah. No, the, the, other ones, the other ones were definitely worse. <laughs> <laughs> the race to the bottom here from the comment writers. Well, see, like, the best part, too, is, like, there's no there's no real bar. Like, it can be the best one ever or it can be the worst one ever. It doesn't really matter because they're all going to come out anyway. Yeah, that's <laughs> And everyone's surprised. <laughs> this episode, is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? Some of them take me by surprise. Some of them I think are going to be bad. And then, yeah, you hit me with one that's actually more clever than I was expecting. 
Comedy only- of errors seems right on par, though. That's that's what I expect. There we go. We're, we're back to the OG. I'm worried that you're not going to have, like, whiskey puns in you. By the end of <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna power through as hard as possible. I was nervous earlier when I was trying to think of some, but we got there. Good. God, how do we make it? Up? Um, I am. Uh, are you are you an energy drink fan, Toby? I am. What have you tried? Uh, e fuel. I don't think so. Maybe once. Oh, it's, it's, if you guys aren't aware, G fuel Wait, is that is the, the is that the gamer one? Yeah, I think I think they're I think the G sits for gamer. I think is what they're going for. They don't explicitly say it. Well, no, let me take that back. <laughs> On the skin, let me it says, read. <laughs> it says beef fuel, the official drink of esports. Ah, see, there you go. And um, well, yeah, that um, you pick for what esports would taste like, and, <laughs> and this is that just with chemicals. <laughs> sweat, sweat, and shame. <laughs> yeah. I'm drinking this one, though. I bought it. I uh, actually do kind of like this one for all the fun I'm making of it. Um, it's, it's Sonic the Hedgehog theme. Yeah. Um, and it's called Peach Rings. <laughs> See, that, that sounds gross. Well, no. Uh, that's clever. Because, like, Peach Rings are, like, those weird gummy candies, too. Oh, yeah. I hadn't, I hadn't actually made that connection. My, my big question. I like energy drinks in general. Like, I, I drink a bang on occasion. The, the dude who runs Bang, like they're like CEO or whatever, is insane and makes me want to not drink Bang anymore. But you know, his, his beverages are fine. Um, but every energy drink has that like chemical back end. Yeah, and, like the only ones that I, the only one I don't really feel like does is like Rockstar is its own weird flavor profile. So maybe I'm just so used to that one. Like that one just tastes like. Like super sour sweet tarts, and you oh, just get like yeah. a weird pucker to it. But yeah, like all the rest of them have like the the linger. And my my big wonder that I've wondered for a long time is like, do they just make them taste like that because people assume that's what an energy drink tastes like, and if it didn't, they would assume it wasn't giving them energy. Maybe that's a, that's just the pure tar, uh, taurine just ripping through your body. Yeah, or taste. <laughs> or is it that? Is it like? I don't know. We put so much crap in this. It's just gonna. It's just gonna taste like chemical because it is chemical. I don't know. Um, every time I crack one open, that's that's the thought that runs through my head. Is like, is this like when they like, uh, you know, what's a, what's a good example? Um, I don't know. Sometimes they like dye specific fruits and stuff, so they look like you would imagine them to look and stuff like yeah. that, like you know, a more vibrant color and stuff. It feels like that to me. Yeah, if it didn't hurt a little bit going down, it wouldn't. It wouldn't feel like it's worth it. You know? Well, yeah, it's like it's like meat or fish or something that shouldn't have colors added to it. Like the places add. Oh, it's, I think it's, I think it's, it's raw meat. Yeah, is it salmon? Yes, yeah, salmon is just for sure one of those where they add that like super vibrant like pink color to it. Yeah, because they're like, well, if people saw it for real, they would think it was disgusting. They won't ever buy it. Yeah. It's like, well, if that's the case, maybe just don't sell it or tell people this is how it fucking looks. We don't need weird dye injected into things. <laughs> oh, I think I think you're right. I think ground beef might be the same way. It's like just regular ground beef you buy at the store. I think they call it dye. They add like red to it or something, so it looks yeah. not gray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of just like it's already just like it's the part of an animal you're buying at a store, just ground up animal. Uh, we have to make this look a little, little more attractive for people. Like, ridiculous. It's all ridiculous. Really, really. This is where my almost vegan vegetarian talk comes into play. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, also ridiculous, Common Rider Deep, because we're finishing up in this episode our game of concentration. <laughs> we're going right into it. <laughs> <laughs> we are here to talk about Common Rider. We should jump into it. We discussed Common Rider Geek episode six for this particular podcast. Um, we have been we've been trucking along here in the Common Riders, and I think we've really been enjoying what we've gotten so far. So, uh, can you give people like a brief recap of episode five? Like what what was going on? What was the what was the issue being faced with? Here? So the main one was we're playing concentration with the uh, Giamoto. 
and no one really knew what it meant at first. But then everyone started learning that it just meant you have to do team kills of matching cards. But then the crux of the end of the last episode was that our friend Mary was like, hey, I can play this card and buy stuff where I can pick a better team and turn against good old Pump Jack, which is the greatest common rider, pumpkin headed bear we've ever seen. Uh, he's certainly my favorite in that particular category. Yeah. Well, this episode, uh, episode six opens um, right from that same point. Mary reveals that he has indeed bought the team swap card, and um, he's looking for he's looking for a, a redraw. We, we were kind of confused about how it was going to work last episode, like whether he just was, like took a new teammate or kind of what happens. Uh, it turns out it is a full like redraw of teams is what it. And like he draws a new partner at random. However, Mary also reveals that he, quote, can feel what the draw is going to be with his hands. It kind of insinuates that he can stack the deck in some way. And then when he tells Buffa that, Buffa's like, what do you do for a living? He, and, right. we, and, we fi- and we find out he's a big cheaty fuck. <laughs> yep. We find out later, uh, I believe uh, Ace is, is, is looking him up on the internet. He was a uh, an illegal casino dealer who ran away with his money, and he's apparently sold the lamb. Like he's like left the country, and is now <laughs> uh, a common writer when, when in his free time. And now he's making wishes that can control the world. <laughs> yeah, great, <laughs> good. Stuff. Uh, we definitely knew that there was like more to Mary because we hadn't learned much about him, and he acted strangely at times, like very nonchalant about very serious situations. And apparently it's because he's a psychopath. <laughs> it's always, always fun. We, uh, after that, we head into the lounge again, and we get maybe my favorite like scene from this episode, where we get to see this like cute little common writer geek parfait that Neon is eating. Yeah, the, I was like, the little cookie. It's basically like a big ice cream, but that cookie has the faces... I guess we'll call it like off the, the cards or yeah. like off the buckles. It's a little logo kind of deal. But it, I'm pretty sure it wasn't a neon face. Like, wasn't it a, a geek face? See, I thought it was neon, but I'm going to... Oh, okay. She, she might have been eating, eating her own logo then. In my head, I loved the idea that she was like, I would like one of geek <laughs> not Not my <laughs> own. <laughs> it's much more delicious. Oh, no, it's definitely Geets. I, I'm looking at it now. <laughs> That's perfect. Well, I guess I guess when you're like when you're Lord Ace and you're the king of everything, I guess they would make ice cream for you. Right. Yeah. He did. Yeah. He made the world in his own in his own vision. And yeah. That that includes apparently the treats that are uh, that are on offer here in the common writer lounge. Um, uh, r- real quick before we get too far past it, and like what they deem the cold open, like the pre intro credits roll. Mm-hmm. Um, Kayla did another one of his blogs to himself on his phone yep. and i was actually thinking about it and that's actually like kind of a clever way to do the because basically like almost like the last time on common rider geats yeah. kind of thing so it's actually like a remotely clever way to do it where just kind of like tie it into the story more than just do like a splash screen and like last time kind of deal yeah i think this episode that it became clear that that's what they're using that for um I thought maybe there's going to be more to it, like someone's going to find his camera phone or something, or like there's going to be some plot device. But I, I think you're totally right. I think he does that specifically so that he can give a recap, <laughs> which is <laughs> which is pretty smart. Yeah, honestly, yeah. You have um, to keep it. You have to keep it in a uh, in universe. Yeah, because there's the past Common Rider seasons, um, like Common Rider Uber, for example. They introduced this. Um, kind of otherworldly narrator character. It was like in universe, sort of, but like not really involved with the characters who was doing that sort of like set up the episode recap type stuff. Okay. And in that particular instance that character was like very weird and kind of like off putting and like seemingly out of place in kind of the rest of the show and characters. So I appreciate them finding a more clever way to do that here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, the little the little geek parfait reminded me uh, of a thing you probably aren't aware. In Japan, there is a common Rider cafe and they specifically do 
Kamen Rider themed dishes for like all of the shows and like they change their menu up constantly. So like you'll see on Twitter sometimes like the new offering from the Kamen Rider Cafe. Is it, like, is it only one specific no, is it like I think, one place or is it a chain? Oh, I think it's a singular location. Yeah. Um, and like they, they change it all the time and always are doing like weird clever stuff like that. And this seemed like exactly like something that I would see there. <laughs> yeah, that makes perfect sense. I'm pulling up some of the examples here of recent ones that I've seen. Um, <laughs> When Kamen Rider uh, Fies was uh, on, they did like a pizza with like one slice taken out, kind of, because it sort of looked like his helmet. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I, I'm torn on that because I would enjoy that for the reference. I would get mad I was missing pizza. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it's a very thin slice, so you're not missing right. too much pizza. Uh, and they they do a lot of drinks too. So like a lot of, a lot of the pictures that I see are like various cocktails. And like one of them in particular that I'm looking at right here, um, it has like a little like mini common writer head made out of like crushed pipe in the middle of it. Oh, sweet. So, yeah, it's like it's very much like just like that weird part that you she had was. Um, it's just like common writer stuff sort of thrown in wherever they can <laughs> in their food. So I, I'm wondering if they're not going to start literally serving those common writer cookies. Um, yeah, we found out then after that about. Mary being the illegal casino dealer, and then uh, our game seemingly is going to resume here, and we find out that yes, the team swap did happen. Mary drew a new card, and he suddenly is partners with Muffa, meaning Kewa and Punk Jack are going to be teaming up. Um, Mary very blatantly insinuates that he can feel the logo on the card so when he wrecked it he just found the one that he wanted and pull it out um, which makes sense as a cheaty dealer it all t- like they they did the reveals kind of quick at, with that mm-hmm. uh, maybe it was a little more obvious when he like when he specifically showed like look the cards raised but obviously that was a nice way to show how it was rigged pretty quick we're just like oh how did he do this and he's like well yeah i can feel the cards <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was like this right here um yeah i like that he was like I don't know, obviously he's not outright admitting that he cheated, but he's pretty pretty blatantly kind of showing, <laughs> showing his hand, so to speak, what he did. Uh, I, I like that. He, he's kind of a kind of a jerk and really rubbing it in uh, Kewa's face. Because later, you know, he really tries to kick Kewa while he's down. <laughs> so that was a good setup sort of for how much of a jerk he becomes later on. I think it's funny that, like, they le- kind of led him as, like, the lovable, happable scamp the whole time. He did. Yeah. And really, like, out of nowhere, he became, like, the number one worst jerk of the person that's in the game. Yeah, that was my one complaint this episode, was, like, I like the reveal of finding out that he's this kind of international criminal, but I wish they would have planted a seed of that earlier. Because they've been doing such a good job with the low reveals for Ace, um, and, and with Neon, even. But with Mary, we got nothing up until this episode where it's like, oh, by the way, <laughs> we're going full story. force. <laughs> yeah. So I wish we would have like gotten him like talking about cards or something earlier, like making some mention of like, eh, I'm not going to talk about my job or something like that. Uh, but I, either way, yeah, I like, I like the shift on him where he's not just you know, like comedy anymore. You know, how I'm mean, just like eating force to be reckoned with. He's a very different. You know, he's a very different negative force in the Kamen Rider group <laughs> than, than, like, Buffa is, where Buffa still, you know, hates Kamen Riders, but is operating on some sort of code. You know, it might not make a ton of sense, but it makes sense to him, and Mary really is going to do anything he can to, to get over whether it's eating or not. Yeah, he's just, he's just, and, like, at that point, too, it's weird because, like, so I wonder what his wish would be then. Because at least, like, like Buffa has his horrible "I hate common riders" one, yep. but like, but like, it kind of makes sense. Like, it's really, it would be, it's really hard to even get a vibe of like what Mary's would be at this point. Yeah, like, and, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what ties to like I cheated at cards, other than like maybe I get my job back. <laughs> I mean, or it's probably like it's probably just money too. Like, I mean, he's a 
he's a person clearly motivated by money, uh, or, uh, or yeah, I guess it could be power, but I don't know. Knowing him and like kind of the stuff he was doing this type of thing, it's probably just like, I have a billion dollars. <laughs> I wish, I'm, gonna wi- I'm gonna wish for infin- infinite more wishes. <laughs> yeah, he would have done something like that. Also in this scene, uh, Kawa, uh, sorry, uh, Neon uses the word sussy. <laughs> really yeah, I hated it. that. I, I hate any internet lingo. I think <laughs> I think I'm too old for a lot of these phrases that these crazy kids use nowadays. But sussy's definitely one of the stupid ones. <laughs> yeah, sussy's pretty dumb. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, sussy was actually like. I had never really heard that one before. Like, obviously, context clues, I figured it out. But I'd only heard us. I hadn't heard people call it Sussy before. I thought, uh, Neon has definitely got our fingers to the pulse of the internet with all the things that we say. Yeah, the, 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 fake, the fake Twitch. They must use that a lot there. <laughs> Poggers, it's <is> pretty sussy. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> this next scene is wonderful. Uh, so... Obviously, Kawa and Punk Jack are teamed up, and they head down to a beach to try to figure out if they can work together and take down some some the some of the card of Giamato. And Ace and Neon tag along, really just to kind of watch. <laughs> like they're not really like starting in on it to any uh, any any killing themselves. They're just like they just, they just roll down and they're like, "Yeah, you're really in trouble. You guys are <laughs> you guys are going to have some issues here." What's funny too, because like that makes uh neon more like uh geats at this point now like in the yeah. beginning i would think she'd be more of like the helpful like let's tell him what to do so i kind of appreciate that they went down because like obviously when they first started i was thinking they're gonna be like oh well, this is what we're trying to do here like this is the solution but they didn't tell him what to do they're just like yeah this is gonna be tough yeah and jack doesn't talk <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you're kind of screwed here <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel like they've given Neon the, the confidence to be that character now, where yeah, starting out, she would have like maybe been trying like said, to, to help Kayla, or at least would have like been worried about her own place in the game or whatever, but now she just kind of constantly stand by her and be like, yeah, it's a bummer. <laughs> Hopefully <laughs> Sucks, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so it, it, this part also answered the question that we were kind of floating around last time. Yep. Where we were questioning if you were nicer to Pump Jack, would he actually be helpful and listen? And did Mary just piss him off and that's why he was an idiot? But apparently, no. Apparently, he yeah, just goes he, off on his own no matter what. Yep, yeah, the answer is just no. Uh, Kayla is like, tries to talk to him and says, you know, he, he asks them essentially, like, are we going to work together or whatever? He was like, oh, look, he nodded and he didn't move at all. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Kayla attempts to say, like, we gotta work together, we're gonna go at the same time, he starts transforming, and Punk runs off to fight the enemy in the mid mid transformation to Kewa. And Kewa does a really cool, like, break the fourth wall line, where he's like, don't people usually wait for the transformation? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, Punk Jack, um, th- there's no secret to making Punk Jack work correctly. He's just, he's just dead weight. <laughs> yeah, he's just him. He's gonna yeah. do what he's gonna do. We also in this scene get a pretty surprising uh, development, I guess I'll say, from Ace. Ace uh, gives Kewa the boost buckle back. He says, hey, if I give this back, like, you're clearly going to need it if Punk Jack is, is on your team. So here, take this back. And it's Neon who actually says, like, wait, what are you doing? <laughs> like, we got that. Um, the last episode, if you remember, they did their uh, their deal where Neon said, like, yeah, you guys can swap if you also throw in the boost buckle. Uh, he's giving it back. He's, he's uh, giving the buckle back out of the kindness of his heart. Okay, so after Kewa finds out that, you know, it's not going to go well with Punk Jack, we're back in the lounge and, uh, you know, he's, he's looking kind of sad, but Buffa, you know, talks to him basically like, hey, why don't you just get a ticket and swap to him? Kewa says he doesn't want to do that because it's not fair to everyone else. He says, if everyone else is happy, then I'm happy. The the, I mean, the, the purity isn't working as well at this point. Well, because, yeah. like, I was remotely impressed where during, we'll call it training, like, he seemed like he's getting a little more aggressive with, like, hey, I'm actually going to compete and try and go do things. And then, like, after training, he's like, eh, if anyone else, someone else wins, that's fine, I guess. 
if they're having a good time, fuck it. Yeah. I like I like Tuffa's sort of rebuttal here. And he says, like, bringing yourself down for others makes less fun. Like, yes, if everyone's happy, you can be happy, but if that requires more sacrifice, I mean, that's not, not worth it. That's not is, smart of a plan. Yeah, it's very smart. It's very buffer, but it's very smart, too. And, yeah, Kiwa, I'm kind of telling Kiwa, like, you're kind of being a doormat here, and if you have the means to help yourself, you should. Mary shows up at that point, calls Buff out into the hallway, and Mary, with his uh, fingers, we know he's a thief now, has stolen the boost buckle. And, like, it seems weird that, I guess it doesn't matter, it seems weird that they can steal things from each other. Like, if it's supposed to be legit, like, it's his item, it seems weird that if he, like, sets it down somewhere, you can just take it, because then why not just steal everything from everybody? Yeah, well... Um, that, that would be valid. Yeah, these games are <laughs> great, I guess. That's how I would play. Just steal <laughs> everything. Oh, man. It's not, not very valorous. You make Kiwa cry. Good. He deserves it. He has it coming. Mary, at this point, was picking some of all their down as a valid strategy. But yeah, he would, he'd be in good company. Sure, <laughs> I think. We'd be the ultimate team for sure. <laughs> Uh, so then we get um, we get Buffa's flashback again to um, when his when his friend died, and it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's laughter as as his friend died. At this point. Well, yeah, and like so, it, it's funny because we even I think remotely floated that maybe Geats knew, but we find yeah. out that Geats actually knew. Like I guess like the big reveal of that was. He makes a comment about it, and Geet says, "Like what you thought? You thought I didn't know?" So like Geet's knew the entire time why Buffa hated him, and never really like showed his hand on that, and just kind of yeah. rolled with it. He was like letting him say as much as as he wanted, and kind of drag it out of him. But yeah, he just sort of just knew the whole time. And then after that exchange, we we get sort of the full flashback. So like we find out kind of exactly what happened uh, when Buffa. Saw his friend die, and it was Common Rider, two different Common Riders that essentially beat up his untransformed friend, who was also a Common Rider, just to take one of his buckles. So they just beat this dude down, leave him for dead, and as soon as they walk off, the Yamato run up and kill him. So that's exactly what he's talking about. There are some riders that'll do anything it takes to win. So, to your point, of like, crazy that this is allowed like essentially, essentially like assisted murder was allowed <laughs> for that particular game like murder by a geometro you know at least with mary he's just pickpocketing Kawa. here like he caught them in a dark alley and beat them up and left them for dead uh, it's a little bit worse yeah like at least like at least he didn't stab Kawa for the buckle he's just yeah. like hey you put it on the ground i'm gonna go pick it up now the uh, I thought it was interesting. The the writers that were beating up Buffa's friend were two writers we actually haven't seen yet. Uh, it was an elephant, so he had like a long trunk, I was kind of swinging around, and the other one he had like horns, kind of like long horns, almost like Buffa's horns that stick up, but not like Mary's, where they're like a ram horn that kind of curl around. Um, they they were in the darkness; you couldn't make out too much about them, but you could you could tell enough to sort of those with the so, so, so going with Buffa's the power to destroy every rider wish now. That seems almost like the equivalent of the one that was I want everyone to die. <laughs> I, I feel like the end result's almost the same thing. Like if Buffa would win, obviously the Desire Grand Prix thing is important, where they use it to quote unquote save the world from the weird agreement that we don't know about. Yeah. So if he killed all the riders, would he be the only rider and have to fight everybody? Or does it just like this whole thing just stops and then the Jamoto get everybody and the world just dies anyway? Or That's a great it... question. Yeah. And I feel like I feel like this episode was where all those questions started coming back up again for me. It's just like, wait, how does this work? Like well, how how do we how are we saving the world with, with this game? Um 
Yeah, because I don't, I don't know. I, that, that's a great question. Yeah. There's weird I, logistics I, again. Very weird logistics. I, I, I think that they're wording Buffa's, uh, what he wrote in his card very specifically, because he's not, he's not saying, I want all common writers to die. He's wishing for the power to destroy all common writers. So, probably, it's going to end where he wins, he becomes very powerful, and then has, like, a piece of heart or something, right? Like, like, well, you have the power, you could destroy them if you wanted to, or you could work with them because you've played friends now. <laughs> wink, wink, not a judge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, that's when you see Buffalo's card there, and, you know, pretty much the confirmation that that's what it was. He kind of knew that it was the, you know, he, it was something angry about common writing. So that was that's pretty much what we were kind of expecting. Uh, we are back in the lounge then after that. Kewa is crying about losing his loose buckle at Marius Colum. Soon after this, however, Buffalo walks in and basically reveals that he has the boost buckle. Um, and Mary essentially, like, blurts out that he's the one who took it. And he's like, oh, why, why are you showing him the thing we showed him? <laughs> the classic double flim flam. Yeah. <laughs> I thought at this point that Buffalo was just going to give it back. Like, I thought he showed back up to be like, no, you take this. Like, it, it's ridiculous. And Mary took it. He doesn't quite go that far. <laughs> he <laughs> he says that he has it, shows it, and he says, listen, you can have it back, but you have to beat us in a game. The game that they play is essentially capture the boost buckle. They plant it in the sand, they head off in either direction, and then it's a race to the buckle. Whoever gets there first, um, and I guess with the hold of it wins. He actually gets there first, picks it up. Then they just fight. There's a little scuffle. Um, Mary just throws him. Yep. Cla- a huge hip toss and just like basically kicks him in the face and says, I'm going to take this now. And, and he does. Kinda... And then it's just over. Like, I don't I don't know why it wasn't over when Kewa grabbed it the first time. Like, I don't know why there was like a little bit of a hip toss that got to go on there before we called it. But um, apparently that was all within the rules because as soon as Mary grabs it, Buffa takes it, and says, "Like, well, that's that. <laughs> like, that decides <laughs> that, it." That was fun, guys. Thanks for the, thanks for your time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Kewa once again does not get his precious new Buffa back, um, despite having it every single game thus far. Then the mission begins again. So we are back finally to our concentration game. We're at a theme park this time, which is a pretty interesting setting, I thought. And it's, a, it's an interesting setting. I feel like it's also a staple of these shows. Like, I feel like most, I mean, obviously it's a different series, but like most Power Ranger shows, yeah, I feel like always has one episode where they're at a carnival or carnival adjacent amusement park kind of thing where they fight yeah. around like the like the merry-go-rounds going, so they jump on the merry-go-round, jump off and attack, and goofy oh, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. Like a, a definitely a, a trope. And yeah, you said like um, theme park adjacent stuff. Like, like they, I feel like they fight in like theaters a lot, and like big open places where they can run up the you know up past all the seats and stuff like that, and fight all the all the various parties and enemies all around. Yeah, because it's it's like the big open public places that Japan has. <laughs> yeah, any place that's easy to film in with yeah. lots of room. And now you can film with all your drone shots and stuff. So it's probably even easier and more fun to film in. Uh, Buffalo is seeming, seemingly not very on board with Mary at this point as a team. Buffalo doesn't really move at first. Mary kind of fights along. And then Buffalo finally transforms sort of after some prodding from Mary. And Buffa has the boost buckle, uses it. <laughs> and one of the first things he does is he uses one of the, the Giamato basically as like a skateboard. Like he throws him <laughs> on the ground, jumps on him, and uses the, the, the boost uh, on his legs to propel him forward. I thought that was really cool. <laughs> and then for like whatever reason, as part of that, it did one of the best special effects I think we saw so far. Mm-hmm. It was like there was a weird like stop time movement where like there was just playing cards floating in the air everywhere, and they kind of like zoomed through the scene and showed everybody like attacking, but like time so, like standing still as well. Yeah, and it was actually like super well shot, like artistically wise. Yeah, that was so 
the, the moment that that happened, I, the reason I think that they did all that was, was pretty pivotal because sort of that's when another team shift happened. So, um, Buffa, we find out, is now teaming with uh, Kaywa. There was another like kind of secret team swap for their the actual team. And that big freeze frame shot that we're talking about was when they did a team up kill. So, Kaywa and Buffa kill at the same time, hard spoiler freeze frame. And yeah, I wrote down one of the coolest shots I've ever seen in Because, <laughs> um, you know, we, we rag on the show for its PG. It was very bad at times. But that was a moment that I felt like was legitimately good in, in any show that I would have seen that in. Like, that was very cool. Oh, yeah, not for like, sure. It's not like cool for Common Writer. It was, just, it was just cool. When it kept going and they kept sort of like zooming more, I was like, Oh, this, is <laughs> <laughs> this is actually extremely well done. Yeah, I comparing this to some of the other stuff we've seen in the series, it's hard to believe it's like the same company and the same team <laughs> that's doing it. Well, yeah, especially like there's just, there's such weird heavy swings of like real good to real bad. I think yeah. it makes it more dramatic on both ends. It really does. Really <laughs> Uh, so the, the team up there happens happens pretty quick. What are your what are your thoughts on sort of that the double cross there? I was I, I'm just I guess remotely excited that Buffa is now chaotic good as well. <laughs> like he's basically slid into more of the Geats role of like, well he's kind of a dick still, but he is remotely seeming to care about people a little bit more than in his initial stance of, I want you all to die or no more. There are the power for all, me to get rid of all you guys kind of thing. Yeah, he, I, I agree. Yeah. And I thought that the scene where he talked to Kiwa in the lounge, where he was just kind of like, Hey, why don't you buy a ticket? What, what's going on? That was interesting. Cause the first time that they'd paired up, he basically wouldn't speak to him and told him that he wanted all Colorado to die. <laughs> and now he's sort of chit-chatting with him in the lounge in like a big turning point. And this especially, I think I think all the merry development is making Buffa realize that there are definitely shades of gray to Common Rider. Some of them are truly evil and some of them aren't. <laughs> and Kua maybe is one of the ones that aren't. Well, yeah, so, it was... Like, I, it was... It was heavy, like when Geats gave Neon the speech the other time of like, "I'm going to straighten you out, so you actually have to take this seriously and do it right." Yeah, this was like Buffa's equivalent of the same thing, where he's like remotely taking him under his wing and being like, "Don't be so stupid sometimes." Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah, in, in his own Buffa way, <laughs> but it definitely is that. After this, we get um, an awesome view. <laughs> Of uh, Geet using Neon's uh, big pink hammer, <laughs> it was great. He, uh, he he rotates the magnum down to his legs and then uses the hammer. And does it kind of boost Neon up in the air really far for them to get a double double kill? <laughs> so they kill four Geometro at once to yeah. uh, net themselves some points there. Yeah, like it was definitely again leaning into the crazy, stupid video gamey. Let's make this quick time event as rad as possible. Yeah. Just watch and enjoy. <laughs> that is exactly what it feels like as a quick time event. This this other other nonsense. He had no reason to grab the hammer, but just wanted to show off. Okay, hey, hey, watch this trick. <laughs> <laughs> so that ends our our current round. Um, final points: Geek and Neon have six hundred. Kawa and Buffa have two hundred, and Mary and Punk Jack now the the newly formed Mary Punk Jack team once again. Have the big goose egg, so Mary gets eliminated. There's uh, there's some creepy music as Mary is retired, and we get, of course, now the classic: he is no longer qualified to be a common writer. Exactly. Uh, but they, oh, they, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was, I, I, we're gonna say, uh, okay, well, it does question like, what does it mean to be disqualified <laughs> as a common writer? Uh, first of all. I love that no one bothered to ask that for DuPont. I love just like, yeah, screw that guy. He's gone. We're happy. <laughs> uh, it was now a little curious, though, what happens to um, disqualified writers. And he gets the answer 
you return to your original life. Now, a couple things. One, when she says that, Ace looks very confused. Like, we get a little cut to Ace, and he's the one who kind of knows about these games and, and seems kind of one step ahead of everyone so far. And he kind of has this look on his face like, yeah, that's not really how it works. <laughs> At least that's how I interpreted it. But, yeah, it definitely makes sense. But the second thing was like, they told us that if you die in the game, you die in real life. And it certainly looks like dying when they eliminate the writer. So I, I wonder if it's true or not. That's all I'm saying. It, just, it feels a little, feels a little like we're <laughs> we're telling some fibs. I don't know. Playing fast and loose with the rules. Yeah. Obviously, we know that people play the game multiple times, and they didn't win, <laughs> basically. Um, so there must be a way to get disqualified and and not be dead, but um, yeah, certainly I was assuming that they were just dying. I was very, very shocked about it. The one important thing to point out for the end of the fight was I was watching when the boost buckle did its blast off and like back into wherever it retires to. Uh-huh. Everyone actually dodged it this time. Kawa successfully, after six episodes, did not get smacked in the face with the buckle. Yeah, I, bet, I thought Mary was going to get it this time. Um, but uh, maybe that was too much insult to injury. <laughs> he, was our, he was also going to lose the whole game and get disqualified. But yeah, everyone's, everyone's learning. Everyone now knows to expect the wild boost bubble to come their way. Uh, our episode closes out. Um, we find out so um, the kind of host of the games is kind of speaking to the camera. Find out she's talking to that mysterious guy in the mask that we see on occasion. He says, he says we're close to deciding the the desired deity. The game is nearly over, and uh, we find out the final boss Yamato has been identified. So we'll, we'll figure out what that means next episode. But he said we're close to the end here, and it certainly feels like it. We're left with the four the four writers who feel like main characters here: Kishion, Kewa, and Buffa are the ones they've obviously invested the most in, and now it's just like if any of them get disqualified or are sort of missing from the show, that's like a way bigger deal than, yeah, than losing I, your Mary and your Pond and whoever else. Yeah, like it seems like these would be the solid four up until the actual end, unless they need... I would assume unless they actually need like someone to die to drive some sort of story point. Yeah. I would think these are a solid four. Uh, with the weird camera architect guy watching the games. I know they showed his mask this time. Is this the first time we saw his face? Um, we, we've seen that front of the mask a couple of times. Um, is the, okay. I think we talked about it before, but like in the first episode, the mask is different. And then they change it up for like the subsequent episode when we see him. But they've, they've kind of pinned around to the front at least a couple times previously. Okay. And then the important thing was when they were hyping up, this is the final boss. Uh, he asks the host girl, can you save the world again? So it's actually like, I guess he's more of a good character. Like it kind of seemed like they were floating. He was like the watching bad guy kind of thing in the beginning. Or at yeah. least that was the vibe I think we said was. And now we've, I guess, confirmed that he's actually like, he's like the Zordon of this. He's like running the show. Or she's like running part of the show in the background. Yeah, unless there's like another twist. He also was very um, invested in the fight between Deep and Buffa, like in, in a way that like it seemed like he wanted it to happen. Um, you know, in the, the last time we saw him, not not a glimpse of him. So yeah, it's, did this episode just seem like he was pretty invested in you know the, the world being saved? But you might be invested in the world being saved even if you're a bad guy because, you know, you, you want to keep being a bad guy in a world that exists. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it, it is still hard to judge. But at least but he I'm, seems to be leaning a little more towards the good side at this point versus the bad one. Yeah. And I think, I can't remember or not, if this was the first time that the host of the game, the girl there, has actually spoken to him directly that we've seen. He may have done that in the past. This, this was the first one I could remember happening. Um, See, 
I would assume she didn't only because my vague recollection of all of it was he seemed evil at first. Yeah. So I wouldn't think that she would have directly talked to him, but maybe I, it's always like two second cuts. So maybe I blocked part of one of those out and just don't remember. Yeah. It goes, it goes real quick for sure. But I, yeah, I, I, he's closer to him than I, I think I at least realized, even if they had showed it to us before. So I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully we find out more about that dude before, you know, the end, before we're like, at the episode end. Like, we're, we're coming to a big conclusion, it feels like, at least in this first arc where we finished up one of these, you know, Desire Deity games and we transition into whatever's next another game, a different version of the world, whatever. Um, I hope we get a decent reveal at that point. Right? Yeah, like, so, some sort of... Like, I want the excited payoff, where I'm like, holy shit, it's been, like, Kayla's dad the whole time, or, like, something yeah. weird like that, and not just, like, hey, it's a random face we never saw, by the way, what is this? We're, just gonna, we're just gonna say, like, he's the first rider from 35 years ago, or however fucking long the show is. Yeah. <laughs> um, which I guess, which but, I guess, like in theory, would be a fun reveal too. Yeah, just probably, not for me. It I will get be it. more in that direction, <laughs> <laughs> where it's like a face you've literally never seen before, and he's just in that position. But um, yeah, I'm excited to excited to find out for sure. All right, any other final thoughts here? Common Rider beats episode six. Just, I just the main one is I'm excited for Common Rider episode seven. Because I feel like we're finally get some closure of a full game, or we're coming dangerously close to it. Yeah. So I just want to see what happens at the end of a full game, and then the aftermath of such things. Me too. Yeah. It, 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 part of the fun of a Common Rider series for me, like you have when we talked about it, kind of as we gone through these episodes, like there's all that sort of initial setup and exposition they have to give you about what's the world like, what's the origin of these Common Rider powers, you know, who's fighting who, what's going on. And that's what's interesting, but, like, you kind of have to get through it until you figure out what the show is about, right? And then I feel like in these past few episodes, we've really been hitting our stride on, like, okay, this is what the show is about, right? We're, we're doing these missions, each one's taking, like, two episodes apiece, potentially, it's ending in an elimination, we're finding out about characters, really kind of feels like we're, we're rolling, and... That's, that's really fun for me. So I'm excited to have that first game finished and then see, like, okay, is that actually what the show is as we continue? Is that just the cycle that keeps continuing? Or are we still in this super elongated kind of intro period? Because uh, it, it feels like they can kind of go either way <laughs> at this point. Yeah, but definitely. I'm, There's definitely yeah. some options still. Or at least they're running low on what all you can, what all you can like, swing or spin it, but it's definitely hitting the stride of like, okay, now the show is going. This is what we're doing. Enjoy. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm kind of excited either way, but yeah, I, I'm with you. I'm excited to kind of see that first first game to its conclusion and kind of see what happens. All right. Well, that was super fun. That's going to do it for our episode. Um, tune back in next time for episode seven. Uh, in the same place where you found this, we are available. In podcast form, just search for the comment writers in your favorite podcast app, and we should be there. Or you can check out the video version of the show. Also, just search on YouTube for the comment writers, and you'll find the playlist there of all of our past episodes. Um, you can uh, get little nice visuals while we chat about the episode. It's a fun way to watch. Uh, you can also follow us in the various other things that we do. Where can the people find you on the internet, Toby? Uh, it's at Life of Tobes on Twitter, Life of T O B E S, and also Tobes Plays on YouTube, where I play lots of games over and over and over. Uh, much like Common Rider has gone on forever, I've played every Yakuza game now, and just about finishing up Like a Dragon. So it's eight Yakuza games in a row. So feel free to watch all of those. <laughs> <laughs> feel free to devote your life to my Yakuza <laughs> playlist. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much what it feels like. <laughs> And uh, I am on Twitter at least as long as my website exists, but I'm definitely not paying $8. But until then, you can find me on Twitter at pretty D slash C R E T T Y D E C E J O S. 
So once again, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, it means a lot, all of your listens and all of your uh, watches. And uh, keep coming in. We'll be back next time for episode 7. And uh, until then, hey, Jack? Can we call it Jack again, Amaro? I don't know. Gehenshin, bro. <laughs> I'm taking shots at the enemy. I'm gonna make it to the top, leave a legacy. If I got something to say, you better let me speak. Turn it up a new degree, bitch, you ain't seen anything. I pop off with the new rock, electronic, blow the sonic roof up. I'm too honest when I take.